Having an attractive quality that gives pleasures, pleasure to those who experience it or think about it. This is how beauty is defined in the dictionary. Did you know in the English language, the word beauty can be used as an adjective, a noun, or an interjection? The tricky thing about beauty is one person might think you are beautiful while another doesn't. It works similarly on a global scale. But who can really say who and what are beautiful when everyone's perspectives are different? Let's go around the world in 80 seconds because every country has its own definition of beauty. In China, Thailand, and Japan, pale white skin is a sign of affluence and attractiveness. Ethiopia's Karo tribe believes that beauty is literally skin deep. Scars are cut onto the stomachs of women during childhood, and these scars are seen as beautiful adornments that are meant to attract men who are husband material. The women of the Maasai tribe in Kenya are known to shave their heads and use anything from elephant tusks to twigs to pierce and stretch their earlobes to become more attractive. In Burma and Thailand, long giraffe-like necks are the ultimate sign of beauty and female elegance to the Kayan tribe. And they begin priming their necks with heavy brass rings at age five. Each year, more coils are added, and this pushes down the shoulders to give the effect of a long neck. Face tattoos are considered a sacred ritual to the Maori people of New Zealand. Women with tattooed lips and chins are considered the most beautiful. In India, women accessorize using nose rings, bindis, and henna tattoos to make themselves more attractive for festivals and celebrations like weddings. The United States has a different definition completely. Women are considered beautiful if they are thin, tan, have a big booty, and plump <laughs> lips, and wear loads of makeup. People Magazine recently named actress Jennifer Aniston as the world's most beautiful woman of 2016. And while she was flattered on being named most beautiful, she, in an interview she discusses women she idolizes. She explained that she is, admires them not only for their aesthetics, but for many other aspects of their being. Jennifer Aniston defines beauty as inner confidence, peace, kindness, honesty, a life well lived, she says, taking on challenges and not feeling shame for things that haven't gone the way you felt they should have, and not feeling like a failure or allowing people to critique your life and make you feel like you failed at something. That's just toxic noise. What's your definition of beauty? Thank you. If you had to pick one animal to be your superhero sidekick, what would it be and why? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would have to pick... This sounds, this will sound really weird, but I'd probably have to pick a cat because they have their claws and they're, they're fun to hang out with. I love cats, they're my favorite animals. <laughs> it's, it's my spirit animal, so. I'm gonna challenge you on this one. All right, I'm up for it. If a train leaves San Francisco at 4 p.m., heading towards <laughs> LA at 80 mile per hour, what has been your greatest leadership challenge you've overcome and what did you learn from it? You scared me with the math there at the beginning, but um, my greatest leadership challenge, is that, that was the question, right? Um, honestly, it's working through conflict uh, because there are so many different situations of conflict that will come up either from an individual or on the chapter level or just working through everything is the, it's a challenge because it's, every situation is different. You can't say, well, I've handled this situation, so I know how to deal with all situations because they're never going to be the exact same and everybody's a different person. If you had to pick a piece of fruit or vegetable to represent you, what would it be and why? Um, that's interesting. Um, the only two fruit that I can think of right now are strawberries and kiwi and uh, a combination of the two because I'm bright <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Um, I'm right, and uh, I I feel like being like a bold color, like kiwi is this bright green and strawberries are bright red at Christmas, if that's the colors that come to mind. But um, I feel like those two represent me the best, so they're also my favorite. So. Yeah, um, 
What would someone who doesn't like you tell us about you? Um, they would probably tell me that I don't delegate well because I don't. Um, they would tell me that it's I I'm a taskmaster and I like to do things the way that I like to do them. Uh, so I will go spend hours doing the one project to make sure it's done right and they want to have a part of it and I, I would be like, okay, you can help and then I don't like them very much. But <laughs> I like it done a certain way. Sometimes. Not all the time. I do understand the value of te of, a, of teamwork. <laughs> if that helps you at all. Sarah, what is the most significant goal you would like to accomplish as a regional officer? My one of the most significant goals that I have is I like would like to be able to share my experiences with Phi Theta Kappa with others and hope to encourage them to um, go for their goals, no matter what they may be, whether they're in or out of Phi Theta Kappa, and just show them the experiences that I've had and how they can also have these opportunities. And they also have these opportunities and these experiences by being involved and being a part of the family. Thank you.